up everybody, Mr. Muse here with another lighting Titan how-to video. Make sure you check out my other videos down below. Subscribe, Titan how-to on YouTube. Today we're doing footwell lights. Footwell lights, I got these again from Jason from Lone Star Automotive Lighting. He is your number one source right now for getting things quickly shipped to you and good quality. He has great customer service, so make sure you check out the link below. Now, I got two LED light strips. These two uh, were about a foot long. They came pre-wired for you. Uh, basically, you got a red positive wire and a black negative wire with double-sided 3M tape on the back side to stick up underneath your dash or behind your rear seats, anywhere you would like to put them. Now, here's how I wired them. I wired them possibly different than anybody else would, being that uh, by trade I'm an electrician. I chose to just do extensions. Now, some people may think this is Maybe not the best way to do it, but I did it just in case I would like to add more LED strips anywhere else in my interior of my car. I left room for it to do that. As you'll see in the video, I had to take a couple panels off on, on the inside of my car. Real easy snap panels that you can just pull off. I chose to use the extension method. Basically what I did is I tapped into a live wire, the light green one, which you'll see. And I tapped into a ground, which is just basically an unpainted bolt or screw real easy right next to the light green one ran two extensions off that and used quick splicing taps those I found at Lowe's or Home Depot wherever it's close I got 20 of them for about three dollars and a quarter so you can get those the wire size that I'm using I believe the one that was sent out um, from Lone Star was about 16 to 18 gauge and my extensions were 18 gauge those are American wire gauge so if you're looking for quick taps do somewhere between 20 and 15 uh, those are the ones that you'll see me using. They worked really, really well. A few simple tools for this. You're going to need, if you use the ground tap that I did, you're going to need the socket and the ratchet. That's a 10 millimeter. You're going to need one of those. You're going to need some type of crimping tool. Could be just a pair of pliers if you want to use that. Some type of stripping tool. It could be a wire stripping tool or just a pair of scissors or a razor blade if you can make that work. Uh, besides that, you're just going to need some room, maybe a coat hanger, you'll see me use one. Uh, that's just to feed it through the center console to make sure it gets from one side to the other. Um, I'll show you how to pull the fuses. Um, I'll show you how to put them back in, make sure it's real safe because these lights will open, or excuse me, will turn on when your door opens. When you close them, they'll turn off. When you use your key fob and unlock the car, they'll turn on. When you lock the car, they'll turn off. It works as the same as your cargo lights behind your rear window. So that's why you want to pull those fuses. Um, so while you're in your car and you want to see the lights, all you have to do is push your cargo light button on the left side of your steering wheel. That'll turn your footwell lights on as well. I chose to do the hyper white ones. That's the rest of my car that has LEDs. Those are the two that I tried. So take a look at this video. Hope it helps. You got questions? All later. right. First things first. Panel here. I'm going to pry that up real quick. It's just a quick snap. Let's go ahead and grab and pull. Just prise right up. As you can see, it just comes up. A bunch of snaps slide into these little white things. Next up that I found to do is this is a fuse box right here. Click and pull. That should come out. Fuse box. Now let's look at these fuses. All right, now you can look at the label here, we're looking for that one, Cargo L Adaptive, battery goes from the battery, 10A. Looks like it's a one, two, third one down on the left side. This little thing right here is a fuse puller. 15 is the interior lamp. This 15 right here, right down there, it's a stop lamp. Third one down, this 10 amp fuse right here. You just push it in and you should be able to pull it right out. There's the fuse. As you can see, I pulled it right out. The reason we're doing that is because my door is open. We don't want any power from the battery going to these wires as I'm installing them in. So I took that fuse out with the fuse puller. Next thing you're gonna do, this is, we're on the passenger side right now. Kick panel, right here. This is an easy pry off as well. You have these little things here that attach to the bottom. You're gonna take it, and it's just a pull. You just pull it right off. Now on the very back, you probably can't see it, but there is a screw. So don't pull it all the way off because there's a screw way back there. So you're gonna have to get that unscrewed in the back. 
The wires we're going to be looking at today is, as you can see, running along the door here, running up to a wire bundle, this wire bundle here. As you can see, as I get closer, let's zoom in again. There we go. Light green wire. You can see it right there. It's a light green one. That is the wire we're going to be working with. I'm going to strip away some of this black tape. That's the live wire that's going to make your footwell lights come on when your doors open or you use your cargo lamp switch. So let me get some prep work done and we'll get All going. Right, as you can see, I've clipped some of the tape away. Just use some wire snippers right there. Be very careful, don't snip any of your wires. I've separated the green wire. Now I'm going to install a wire tap with another wire for a live wire. Let's get that installed. Right, as you can see, I have the wire tap on the green wire. I took a pair of pliers and pushed this little silver tab with a pair of pliers all the way through. That's splicing the two wires, holding it together. Now I take this little clip, fold it right on over, snap it into place, and that locks your wire into place. Now I'm tapped into the live wire, but then again, I do have my fuse out. So because my fuse is out, my cargo lights are not on, I don't have live power to this wire. Now, the route that I'm choosing to take is running an extension wire off of it. Now I have an end cap here. I used a heat shrink, just melted it on so that live power, when it does have it, is not coming out through the end of the metal. It has something protected through the wire. I'm running a live wire, just an extension wire off of it. I'm trying this setup to see, because if I end up adding more LEDs, I can put more wire taps onto this wire. So there are no lights hooked up to it now. Now I will tap in an LED strip and let's check to see if it uh, will work. Now, I've just took a terminal lug here, cut it, made a little Y shape. Looking down at here as the tap, you need to make sure you have a ground wire. There is a screw right here that I've backed out a little bit. You need an unpainted screw that's gonna go to the frame. I'm pretty sure this one will go to the frame. We'll test this one out first. All I'm gonna do, since I backed it out, is slide this little thing over the screw I'm going to screw it back in and let's get some stuff All right. Up. As you can see, I have my ground wire on that nut. I also have a wire tap on the green wire. To the green wire, as you follow it down here, down and up, positive. Here's the red. Tapped it to the end of that red wire, as well as to that extension of the cord. Now, if you follow the negative, negative goes around here. Negative is on the black wire, wire tapped in. As you can see, wanted to test it. We have power, our lights are lit up. So now, the only thing we have to do is take your other LED strip right here, put two more wire taps the same way, but put them about three inches away, from another wire tap on the other light, three inches away from this one, three to four inches making sure that you have enough room between the two. Do the same thing, route your LED strips. You can see there's a space through the vent there or right under the vent. You might have to take this panel off. We will route the lights through those to the other side. There's double-sided tape. If you choose not to use the double-sided tape on the back of your LED strips, small zip ties will work. You'll zip tie your double-sided double tape to any flat surface above your wheel well here. Peel up the carpet, peel up the padding. You're gonna run the wires and the extensions underneath that so they're hidden. Making sure that, personally me, I'm gonna wrap, wrap duct tape, or it's not duct tape, electrical tape around these. I'm gonna re-electrical tape what I cut here, making sure all the connections are taped off. Run the lights, post them up, and then I'll get you some uh, shots on what the final product is. Remember, the way this is being set up is when your door closes, these lights will turn off. You touch the cargo lamp switch, that is right next to your steering wheel, the same thing will happen. You can turn your lights on, let's say you're driving down the street and you wanna turn something on to see something on the floor, hit your cargo lamps, it'll turn the lights on in the back of your car, it'll also turn on your LED floor strips. Real nice addition, let's come to get some stuff finalized and uh, I'll show you the finished product. All right, as you can see here, I ran a hanger right behind the vent. I had to pop this panel off, real easy, one, two pop here. Right in that little bracket right here is where a little peg slides in. Just lift it up. Right behind that bracket, I ran a hanger. Just took an old hanger, bent it out of shape. At the very end of it, I used some electrical tape, 
there's my LED light to the end. So we'll go over to the driver's side and we'll pull this all the way through, getting it your lights all the way through. As you can see down here, it comes right behind the hanger. There's a hanger. Here's my pedals. You can just take this slowly feeding it through all the way through. As you can see here it comes. Just feed it all the way through. Just enough that you're going to be able to tape it up and pin it up. That's how you can get your uh, LEDs through. I'll find a nice flat spot somewhere up in here and I'll tape them so uh, they'll stay in place. As you can see, you don't see any wire this way. Run it right under. I ended up taking this panel off. It's just a pull here and a pull up top. There's a little bracket in the back so you pull out towards you this way and pull this way to take this off. I ran the cable up. Your OBDI port is right here. As you can see, I looped it up and through that hole. There's a little hole where the metal bracket is. You can loop it up and through that way. And then there's a little metal bar. Took the double-sided tape, taped it right up there. As you can see, the lights are working. It is daytime, so it's not as bright. But from the top, you can't see anything. That is the way I chose to route it. You can't see anything. It will look factory. Now let's get to the All other right, side. As you can see, there's the one that's going up and through to the other side, driver's side. Here's my passenger side ones. Gave it about four to five inches in between. There's the lights. They're on right now. So let's get this baby hidden and I'll show you how to get these things hidden. Right, as you can see here, there is a split in the padding. So I tore back the carpet, as you can see, from up underneath the wheel well. There's a split in the padding running the wire below the padding just so you don't have to feel it through the carpet with your feet if you're wearing sandals. As you can see, I electrical taped uh, the wires together. I also electrical taped over the uh, splice locks, making sure that uh, there's no type of dust or particles that are gonna get inside. I left all of the extra wire. The beauty of this setup is that you have all this extra wire going from your ground in the green. If you ever choose to add more LED lights, you can just add more splice locks down the side of the wire. Just keep adding more if you want them under the back seats, other places in your wheel wells, anything you need to do. This setup is uh, a beautiful setup to do that. So I'm going to get to uh, hiding these underneath the carpet, put everything back in place, and uh, we'll go from there. As you can see, I replaced the plastic cowl back, put the carpet back. You can see it's a pretty factory look. There's the light strips here, running over, down where my connectors are. This will be hidden behind here, and I will put uh, the plastic piece back into place, and you won't even see any of these wires, and it'll look like a factory. All right, as you can see, the carpet's in. Got the side panels and the walls in. Looks like factory. Make sure you put that, uh, that fuse back in. Remember, it's that third one down right here. That one right there. Put that one back in. Slide that back into place, your fuse puller. Put the cap back on, like so. There we go. As you can see, lights are on, cords ran up and around. You can't even see it from the outside. And we'll get some night shots of it, uh, of it later. But so far, really easy install. Hope this has helped a lot of people out on how to run it. Open in the door. As you can see, there are the footwell lights, all nice and lit up. Remember, these footwell lights are on the passenger and the driver's side. As you can see, they turn on and off with these cargo lights up top. Pretty nice addition, real nice to light up your, your foot wells. This is the driver's side. Here, nice and lit up. As you can see, there they are up top. You can barely see them, but these are the nice bright foot wells. Full LED swap.